Welcome. In this video, I will discuss C++ switch statements. Switch statements are just like if-else statements, except they can only be used on integral expressions. Switch statements are really useful when you have a selection from a user. In general, switch statements are used less frequency frequently than if else statements, but they definitely still have their place in programming. So this is what switch statements look like. They have a switch saying, this is the start of my switch statement, and then an expression that is tested. Again, this expression must be of integral data type. That could be an integer, a long, a long, long, a short, a character, or a bool, or any other integral data type. And then you have cases that they could fall under. So you could have something like case the character A, case the character B, case the character C, so on and so forth. And you can have as many cases as you want. And then you have the final case here, which would be the default case noted by this default. This case token is used to denote the start of cases. And this break token is used to break out of the case. So you can think of the case val and then what value you want that case to be and this colon to be the opening curly brace and then this break to be your closing curly brace. And then you can have any amount of statements that you want between that colon and the break. But if you don't have that break there, this case will continue on into the next case. So this case, this break is very, very important. And note, you don't need the break on the default case because there is nothing that comes after the default case. And we will look at an example that goes over this cascading of the cases uh, here in a bit. And let's take a little bit looker, deeper look at these case statements. So we have this case value, and this is the case to match expression two. So this expression could be, you know, the number one, and then you could have case one here, and that expression would select this case based off of that value. So this these values are the values you want expression to trigger. And then you have your statements and then a break at the end. Again, that is like your closing curly brace. This colon here is like your opening curly brace. And that break breaks out of the case. And if it is forgotten, again, it will continue on to the next case. And we will see that in the programming example. And then we have the default case at the end. And it is used if an expression does, if the expression doesn't match a case. And again, there is no break for the default case because there is nothing, nothing that follows the default case. And let's take a look at using switch statements from a program. So here we have a program that gets three inputs from the user, a length and a width of a rectangle. And then it also gets a character selection that can either be a capital A or a lowercase a or a capital P or a lowercase p. If it's either of the A's, it will calculate the area. And if it's either of the P's, it will calculate the perimeter. And let's take a look at how it makes that selection. It uses this switch statement right here. And this switch statement is going to, that is not the right comment for there. <laughs> The switch statement is going to switch based off of this selection. It can because this selection is a char, which is a integral data type. And then it comes in here and makes a selection. If it's capital A or lowercase a, it's going to calculate the area and output it and then break from this switch statement. You can see right here that we are using that thing where we don't have a break 
in here. So if it runs into this case A, it is not going to hit a break inside of here and it will run into this case lowercase a and then do the same exact calculation because you want it to do that calculation here. So that is better than having to do that twice like that. So that is why we are doing that. And then same thing with the perimeter down here. The capital P and the lowercase p will both run this same section of code and then break out. And we do that so we don't have to have that there like that. And then in the default select or default case here, you can see if they don't enter a capital A or a lowercase a or a capital P and a lowercase p, then it outputs invalid selection to the user. So let's come over here and compile our program with G++ and the name of the program and wait for a second and it will create a dot out, which we can run with dot slash a dot out. And it will ask us to enter a length and a width. And let's do that. And then let's select capital A. And you see we get 50 output because 10 times five is 50. And if you come over here, they get that because you see your end, it takes in those length and width, and then it takes in the capital A. And then it hits this, it makes that selection or uses this switch case based off of this selection, which is a character. And since it's a capital A, it comes down and runs this line of code and then breaks out of this switch statement and exits the program. It will do the same exact thing if we enter a lowercase a. You see we get area is 50 and then Let's take a look at the perimeter, so 10 and 5, and we can put a capital P, and we get 30 because 10 times 2 is 20, and 5 times 2 is 10. Add those together, you get 30. And if you come over here, you see it's, again, switching based off of this selection. And since it's a capital P, it's going to run this line of code, which calculates the perimeter and outputs it. And then it breaks out of this switch statement and then returns from the program. You can then run that program again and run it with a lowercase p and you get 30 output to the screen again. And lastly, I have to enter a length and then a width. And then if I enter something here wrong, such as E, you get invalid selection output to the screen because this E is not either a lowercase p or a capital P or a lowercase a or a capital A. And that is all that I have for you for this video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next.